And that is how you properly strop a Tonto. Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And today we are checking out the, the Concept Pelican. Thanks to Stasa23. Definitely go sub to his channel if you're not already. I will link his channel below. Awesome, awesome content. And you are missing out if you're not already subbed to him. So the Concept Pelican. Now, he sent me this knife to review, and I have been checking it out, using it, testing it, and I'm pretty impressed. Now, I do have some negative things that we will go over here shortly, but first, let's get into this knife. So, the ergos on this beautiful knife is really good on this titanium frame lock. I don't know what this coating is, but it seems to be well done. Um, nice coating, very smooth, and the ergos on this titanium frame lock is real is actually really good. Considering this is a medium size knife, this is not a large knife at all. And there is another version of this, by the way, with a um, I guess a sheep's foot blade, basically like a sheep's foot blade shape. Now you do have this uh, separated jimping right here that actually comes into use. You know, when you're doing certain cuts, it kind of grips your hand from slipping downward. But even though it's not really a neutral grip at all, in the hand, it kind of feels like a neutral grip. Um, even with my, you know, I have large hands and it's very comfortable still. Even the clip just kind of works. Um, it, for some reason, you know, I don't really, I feel it, you know, I know it's there, but it's in no way a hot spot at all. And I like that I can get really close to this blade. It's really nice for the push cuts and, you know, we'll get to the cutting here in a second. Um, it does have all the bells and whistles, lock bar insert over travel stop. So you can't unspring the lock bar when you're unlocking it. Now, the cutting performance. So, it cuts really good. Um, no complaints on the way it cuts. It passes through materials very well. And you do have quite a bit of control with the blade. And I measured this about 15 to 17 thousandths behind the edge which uh, is reasonable, very good, especially for, you know, a relatively tall flat ground blade. Now, cut, when you're passing through the materials, you know, with this version, the Tonto, you do want to make sure the blade stays in the materials. You do have this spot on the top of the spine where you can lay your thumb. And I found myself letting the, the first part of the edge near my, my uh, pointer finger let that part bite into the materials and then I kind of dragged it through and then the materials would kind of just roll over the top of my thumb or the front of my thumb that's laying on the spine as it passes through the materials. And it worked fine. It worked just fine. Um, now for long draw cuts or anything you do have to make sure you know the blade doesn't slip out but it as of, as of passing through the materials it works very well push cuts are also very nice since you can get up so close to the blade um, you do have a lot of pressure that you can put on the 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 handle of the the knife that does sit across your palm very nicely. So you do have a lot of leverage into your push cuts, even though this is a smaller, medium-sized knife. And yeah, passing through materials, it passes through very well. The geometry seems relatively good, especially for um, this, you know, thick the, the thickness of the blade. Now, utility cuts, you do have a tanto here, so you do have two different edges, and both the edges, because of the geometry, work really good. The utility cuts, I did utility cuts through um, double thick cardboard, you know, just like a lot of the cutting I was doing, and it worked just fine. Um, regardless of which edge I decided to use. Now, if I use the secondary edge, yeah, I did have to put uh, a bit more pressure into the cuts. 
But, uh, you know, it seemed like my fingers landed in a pretty good spot to get the pressure I needed to do the utility cuts. And that jimping on the spine of the handle um, worked out really well in these cuts. You know, as I'm pushing, you know, it kind of gripped into my hand very well and seemed to cut very well for utility cuts. No complaints. Definitely no complaints. It did better than I thought it would do. Um, regardless if it was S cuts or, you know, half moons or circles or even just regular draw cuts, it worked really well. Now, the only time I've really found an issue was a couple times and I didn't get it recorded, but when I was doing like draw cuts hanging on to cardboard, so not utility cuts, but I actually like hang on to a piece of cardboard and like I try to you know, cut like this and bring it towards me. Sometimes the blade, like if it was going through the materials like this, sometimes the blade would slip out. So, you know, that is more or less uh, maybe a me issue, but or maybe just a Tonto issue. But as soon as it got to a certain part, this belly could slip out. Now, that's just, you know, a Tonto blade and it not having a, you know, very long blade. But, you know, it's just a thing, you know, and you can still pull it off. It just, you know, you want to make sure the blade is all the way in the material and still cutting. Now, if we look at the spine of the blade, you can see all these place or the place where you really put your thumb mostly and little spots you can put your finger you do have this little hump right there um, back here I'm not that comfortable I more or less go right there your size hand may vary or may be different than mine but yeah very comfortable um, considering the way considering the way it looks I wouldn't think it would be as good as it is now the action, the action is really, really good on this. The thumb studs are well placed and they have the, the I guess, two um, levels of jimping on it or whatever you want to call that. But it grips very nicely onto your thumb. Very easy to thumb flick. The detent is light like I can since this is a coated blade I can easily reverse flick off the bottom of the blade because it is more of a lighter detent but in a good way like it's not a bad detent and I don't mean that in a negative way. It really rockets out and it's easy to reverse flick off of the thumb stud or thumb flick. Now, one thing I really liked about this is that the detent is nice and early. So, when you unlock it, which the lock bar is easy to access, they have these, um, you know, the cutouts, basically. Not a cutout for, you know, for you to get to the lock bar, but on the front of the frame, they have the chamfering or whatever, so you can get in there very easily. And since this kind of pokes out right here, you can basically just put your finger, you know, your thumb right there and hit the lock bar very easily. But since the detent is nice and early, you can unlock it and instead of the blade coming down to hit you, you can let this part right here come down and hit you before the blade gets to you and then let it drop very very smooth like it's it's extremely smooth on the drop almost frictionless and it actually has decent acoustics that i actually you know it's pretty satisfying now the drop on it like i said extremely smooth and it is well centered now you can also top flip this thing there's no jimping, but if there was jimping, it'd be a lot easier, but you can do it even regardless pretty easily, actually, but it would be a lot easier if they put jimping right there. Now, this S35VN seemed to hold up very well through my cutting. Um, here in a second, I will show you how to properly strop one of these tantos but going to the clip 
The clip worked very, very well in and out of the pocket. I'm actually very happy with this t uh, titanium milled clip. Um, most of the, the titanium clips that I've tried or most of the clips period that I've tried from concept have worked extremely well in and out of the pocket. They do a great job on their clips, which to me is a very, very important thing. Um, I... <laughs> You know, it's just when you get a knife and the clip tears up your pants or your pockets, it makes it less likely to end up in your pocket. So I'm happy when I see clips that easily go in and out without damaging the pocket. T8s all the way around. Really love to see that. Good job, concept. That's what we want to see. T8s, no T6s. Get rid of T6s. Now, there are the T6s on the clip, but it's not reversible. So, you know, sorry, lefties. But, yeah. You do see the lanyard hole that uh, does protrude out a little bit farther than the blade that you can use if you would like. The coating on the blade seems to be holding up pretty good. Stasi 23, I'm sure, has used this. Um, a bunch too and you know you see where it's wearing a little bit from where I used it and you know like but that's gonna all blend in after a while that you know it just that's just the way coatings go the first few like real serious cuts you do you kind of see but as you keep using it it just kind of blends in especially since they stone washed it now, to properly strap a knife like this or a tanto like this, you want to treat it like two different edges. Now, if you go and just do the whole edge all at once, the problem with that is that you can round this secondary tip, and that's a, a spot where you want to make as acute as possible. So what you do is you treat it like two different edges. You do that edge first, and then you do the other side. Then you go down to the flat part. Go right, like, along this part right here. Lay it right on the strap and strap the second edge. Go back up to the top edge, this edge right here. Start with the tip. Go back and then end it. End it as you're, you're pulling straight back. Don't round it like that. Just drag it straight back and end it. Flip to the other side. Same thing. End it while you're pulling straight back. Then go down to the next part of the edge. And that is how you properly strop a Tonto. Also, if you guys are interested in this WorkSharp field sharpener that has diamond plate, strop, and a ceramic rod, um, basically a full sharpening on this little device. You can even lift off these plates and there's a little spot to put stuff. Um, or this knife, I will link them down below. The strap will be down in the sharpening supplies, and I will try to get a link for both versions of this. Some bad things before I talk about some things that actually stood out to me in a good way. So a couple negatives. One is the plunge grind. So you see the plunge grind, and they did it good and bad all in one. So the plunge grind ends... Like, kind of like, well, you can see the secondary line. It actually comes down to here. Now, so they gave you a sharpening tool, but now the issue is because you it looks like you could sharpen all of this, which you can. However, it's actually thicker right here, this drop. Let me get another little knife really quick to point this out. Right here. This edge right there is actually thicker than right in front of that edge. So it's literally just this edge on both sides that's actually thicker. So what that's going to do is not too much. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But if you look at the edge, you can actually see how it's nice and straight. Come on. How it's nice and straight, but then right here kind of goes up a little bit. Now that's because of that. And then you can see on this side where when they sharpened it, it actually gave them a little bit of an issue too. 
you can actually see the two different colors of the edge right there is different from right here now this side is most likely just from their belt but the thickness of this plunge right here is going to create just a little high spot right here. It's not that big of a deal. It's really not. But I like to see them do plunge grinds the best way possible, which in all reality, you'll be able to sharpen this one just fine. You'll just have a little bit of a high spot right there, which is not a big issue whatsoever. Now, the next thing about that choil... <clears throat> is that it actually is the stop pin back here. So you think it closes up in here. You think so. Because that's what it looks like when it closes. But it actually hits up here right there so when you're sharpening you can't let you can't remove a ton of steel or you can't hit that is my point so when you're sharpening you can basically only sharpen about that much steel before you eventually hit that part which would hinder the closing part of the stop pin and could cause it to to overclose where you know it's not closed and to the detent and it could create issues so you want to be careful not to remove too much steel when you do sharpen it or if you try to add in your own sharpening trail or anything like that you have to be very careful of that i wish they would have took the stop and moved it up a little bit or just moved it to where it locked right into this part right here where the front of my nail is instead of right here And so when sharpening, you just want to be cognitive of that and just be careful not to remove the steel that it needs to stop in the closed position. Next thing, the grind is a little off from one side to the other. I don't know if it's the actual grind or if it's just their sharpening. I did not sharpen it, but I can see that one side is different than the other now that might possibly just be their sharpening job or it could possibly be the whole grind now i did notice that right here is definitely different oh. come on i'm getting a new camera here soon guys but right there you see how that dimples down right there and on this side it's nice and clean so that just makes me think that it's possibly the grind that one side is a little thicker than the other side since the sharpening bevel is smaller than this side um i doubt that they did two different angles most likely it's the same angle the grind is just a little bit off another thing that's really not that big of a deal but i'm calling it as i see it Next thing, um, I can touch the edge through the back here. Now, it's not to the point to where I think I would cut myself. I actually have to try, but right now I am touching that edge. Um, do I think I would cut myself? I think I would have to try to cut myself, to be honest. So it's not that big of a deal, but I, I can touch the edge a little bit, but I have to try. Now... Um, really all in all, that's really it for the negative things. Um, now good things though, things that actually stand out to me is the heat treat seems like it's pretty good. I used this thing pretty good and the, the sharpness stayed there pretty good. And when it did start getting dull, stropping, it brought it right back. So I have a feeling that this S35VN has a good heat treat on it. Now I can't say that for sure, but it seems as if it does. Next thing, the build quality is really nice. It feels like an expensive knife. The 
just, you know, everything, you know how you can kind of get a knife in the hand and really it just feels like it's um, expensive. It feels high quality. This definitely has that feeling. Next thing, the action is really, really nice. I mean, it's it feels very good to, to flick, unlock, let it drop. I mean, just the whole action experience is very nice. And last thing. You know, aside from just the build quality, you know, T8s and the construction of it that feels very nice, the lock geometry is really good. If it is locked up, extremely solid. I've checked it multiple times. And when I look at the lock, lock face geometry, it looks really good. And I can see it here that it's locked up very good. It just seems like the lock face geometry is done very well. So very impressed with that. So all in all, very cool knife. Very awesome knife. Here's a size comparison really quick next to the Civivi Elementum. Basically the same size. Here's the Kaiser Deviant. I'm hoping to get one of the sheepdog designs from Concept, but we'll see. Here is the Kubi Vagrant. And I said that because this is Kaiser's new sheepdog design, the Kaiser Deviant. Here is the Kubi Vagrant. Very close. Um, the Kubi Vagrant slightly longer. And then here's a little small knife from concept that is quite a bit smaller the goblin the concept goblin so there you guys go i appreciate you guys watching stasa thanks again bud um i love you guys peace